from the former convent of the Good Shepherd overlooking Inwood Hill Park in New York City. Welcome to Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes that make their home in what we affectionately call Upstate Manhattan. I'm your host, Aaron Sims, and today we welcome theater makers Joe and Leslie Burby. Leslie Kincaid Burby is thrilled to be directing live theater once again as the COVID pandemic hopefully winds down. Uh, she directed last fall Sherlock Holmes, The Baker Street Irregulars for Pied Piper of New York. The previous fall, due to pandemic restrictions, Leslie was delighted to direct the company's first film, Robin Hood, which she co-wrote and edited with her husband, Joe. In her downtown directing life, Leslie has been honored with the New York International Fringe Festival Award for her direction of Zamboni by Sean Patrick O'Brien, and has re received the New York Innovative Theater Award for Outstanding Direction for her work on Eddie Antar's Drama Desk-nominated play, The Navigator, which was developed at the Workshop Theater, where she is also an Associate Artist Director. Joe Burby is an accomplished actor and versatile voiceover guy, and wears many other hats as well. <laughs> Recent stage appearances include as the character War in The Four Horsemen of the Internet by <laughs> Dwayne Yancey, Will Brown in Mesquite, Nevada at New York at Workshop Theater, and Dead Tom in The Dudleys at Hear Arts Center with Loading Dock Theater. He has provided voice talent uh, for many on-camera appearances for the National Road Safety Foundation's PSAs and currently has acoustic guide tours at the main hall at Ellis Island Park the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and Guggenheim Museum in NYC, among others. Joe also works as a real estate agent for New White's Realty here in Inwood, and also directs and writes for Pied Piper Theater here in NYC. We're going to talk to them about all their work <laughs> oh my God. over the next 25 hours. No, not <laughs> But we will actually talk to them right away about the highlights and, uh, and, and many more things coming up in their lives. But first, let me welcome you both to Inwood Artworks on Anywhere. It's, it's so great to have you here. Thanks for making the time. Thank Thanks, you. Aaron. It's great to see you. I'm sorry you had to go through all of that. that was, we could have made shorter <laughs> ones. It would have been. Yeah. It's totally fine. We'll, we'll edit it down for uh, the, uh, the podcast, inside the podcast. All right. Uh, cool. for, uh, but uh, hey, you know what? When you have accomplished people like yourselves, you got to make time for the accomplishments. <laughs> It's so, true. Uh, it's true. It's wonderful, wonderful to have you here. And so let's just start um, with the home turf, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. When did you move to Inwood and why? Uh, mm. That's a good question. Well, uh, we, we moved when Adam was about two, so that's 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. And why? Well, we were living in a six-flight walk-up um, that was 600 square feet, and we had our second child. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we went actually to visit some people who have a nice suburban lifestyle. And Joe was like, we're getting out of here. I can't take it. I can't take it. I'm like, but the rent, it's so cheap. It's so cheap. It's so cheap. And then, you know, one day I was carrying Adam um, and Henry because Henry had fallen asleep. And he was at that point three and a half. Yeah. And Adam, a, a bouncing toddler with a whole bunch of groceries strapped on my back. And I got up to about the fourth floor and I just started crying. And they had fallen asleep. So I'm like, what do I do? And I... I laid Adam gently down on the floor with the groceries. <laughs> I hauled the big Henry upstairs, put him gently on the bed, and then thought, they're going to take my child away. Child, they're coming to get me. Abandoned and I, on the yeah, stairs. Abandoned the infant on the stairs. But I did make it in time to retrieve him and the groceries. And when Joe got home, I said, you're right. We got to move. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, right around that time, yeah. I found a, a flyer blowing around under the subway. Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember that flyer? Yeah, so uh, Leslie came home with this flyer, and the flyer had a little tiny picture, because this was sort of pre-internet, um, that said, live in the woods in Manhattan. And it was for New Heights Realty. And I said, there are no woods in Manhattan. <laughs> and we followed up with it and found ourselves in Inwood, and uh, we haven't left yeah. since then. And in fact... Rob uh, Kleinbart at New Heights, this is not an advertisement, sold us our apartment, and now I, I work with Rob at uh, New Heights. So it's kind of a full circle. Absolutely. Thing. And did you, once you actually got up here, did you immediately immerse yourself in the art scene up here, or Absolutely. did that come later? That was almost right away. Pretty much too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no way out. Leslie's still putting the baby down on the stairs. And Enwood is like, what's the script doing That's here? Right. Well, That's I right. definitely remember him, uh, nursing him at my first rehearsals. Um, yeah, um, we, we became uh, friends with our across-the-hall neighbors, Janice and Gustavo. And um, they were also sort of... Um, 
founding people around um, Pied Piper Children's Theater. And um, the, at that time, they were thinking about doing some hybrid productions involving grown-up actors and some of the kids from Pied Piper, and they wanted to do The Miracle Worker. Uh, and they approached me about directing that, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm not really a director. <laughs> I had directed some things, but I just, I'm like, you really should get some. They're like, nope, it's you. <laughs> I said, well, can I bring my kids to rehearsal? And they said, yep. So I did, and um, it's been 20 years of direction since there. Mm. So. Incredible. I built for the me. sets for that production. Oh my God, he did such a beautiful and set then, design. And uh, many sets since <laughs> as well. So yeah. I try to have a hand in everything. But, yeah. uh, I'll never forget the wonderful slamming screen door on the front porch of that set. We <laughs> wanted the Walton's <laughs> screen, do screen door, essentially, and boy, we got it. Yeah, it was, it was nice. Great. And a working water pump. Come mm. on, what more can you ask for? And That's a, right. You know, like a $2,000 production for the entire thing. I mean, it was like, sure. you know, this is... Yeah, because, you know, that key moment when she's <laughs> pumping, wah, wah, you know, she hits the water. Yeah. So we went, we were visiting my mom up in Oneonta, New York, and we went to an old barn filled with junk, and we found this little hand pump. So we mounted it, we built a... We, plumbed it into a bucket right underneath where it would draw the water from right. the bucket and then return the water to the bucket and then built a well around the bucket. And it was a beautiful little prop. It, I'm still proud of that There was one. a gasp when the water came out. The water yeah. comes gushing <laughs> out. Which is really what you want. A, yeah. You know, That's what reveling in that uh, sensation. And so it was pretty cool. <laughs> That's yeah. an amazing story. Uh, well, I think it's almost metaphoric, I think, for the way you guys move Pied Piper forward because if anyone hasn't paid attention, you guys are the, you two, amongst others, I will not say you're by yourselves because that wouldn't be right, but you two are definitely the leading creative engines behind mm -hmm. Pied Piper, at least in, in my 20 year era here in New York, <laughs> oh, uh, and you. as well, is that you've done such service to that organization. Uh, and, uh, and I know the pandemic has put a little bit of crimps in the styles of everybody, but even through that we'll talk about, but, um, you know, I recently, personally from, I've seen many of your shows, saw uh, Joe's, uh, Stone Soup mm -hmm. that he did, um, you know, Leslie to Sherlock Holmes outside, um, on the terrace. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, you guys have just been prolific and, you know, finding creative ways to keep the, um, the community of, uh, the, I'll say the young person's community mm -hmm. alive because I know um, we can talk about it slightly much more as you want to but there's a rebranding of Pied Piper as well mm -hmm. as away from being a children's theater per se and more of just a young person's theater, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the part of the new branding with the, the title, so to speak. Yeah. It's no longer Pied Piper's Children's Theater. Right. Well, you know, right. teenagers don't like to think of themselves as children. I, that's exactly the thing. Exactly right. <laughs> right. Because we spoke, one of the actors came up to me and, uh, and he said, you know, we're not children. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, we, we need to think about that. Yeah, <laughs> they've been they've been grumbling for years about that. Mm. And um, we want to keep the teens involved for sure because yeah. that's mm. just so vital. And often, you know, there's a huge um, cohort of young children, youngsters up to, you know, around usually middle school is the first one. You lose a lot there. And mm. then high school, when they get so stressed out about the New York City high schools, uh, yeah. you know, it's such such an overwhelming, even the application process is so hard mm. that we lose a lot of kids because they're just intimidated by trying to do all the many hours of rehearsal. But the unfortunate thing is they have so much fun and it's so like healing for them to be in rehearsal and to be in mm. a safe creative space mm -hmm. that I always feel like it's such a loss um, for them as well. So we're trying to hold on to those. Yeah, creating a safe space for kids to be creative is a real joy. It's a real privilege to be able to do that. I know that for me, the arts education um, was the only reason I even bothered to stay in school, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And so I saw that that, uh, that opportunity to find yourself in the arts, in a safe space, was uh, magnificent. It, it opened my whole world, you know, and I still think, I think that that's uh, universal, you know, so if you've got a good, good way to um, see how people make art and, you know, express themselves and explore life's problems with art, it's a great thing. It's of great value and nothing else is quite like it. And I think we, we've been very fortunate that we've had, um, not we've not had to be the artistic director. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I want to shout out to all of the artistic directors absolutely. of Pied Piper. Uh, 
uh, over the years. Uh, right now, Colleen uh, Hawks Pierce has been just doing an incredible job during incredible. this pandemic of mm-hmm. carrying this organization forward. So, uh, and, you know, it's wonderful because we get to go in and do uh, a lot of the fun stuff, and uh, we have to do a lot of the dirty work too. But you know, but but we've been very supported in our our development as artists as well. I've certainly learned a heck yeah. of a lot working with the kids. It's a great <laughs> artistic home to. here in yeah. Inwood and has been for a long time. Yeah. So. Well, I hope it continues. And no doubt with you guys involved, it absolutely will. So. And one of the stories of continuance was during the pandemic that I want to, I think I think it was a very significant contribution uh, to Pipe Piper's programming is the digital production of Robin Hood mm. um, created during the fall of 2020. Uh, you co-wrote and the screenplay, uh, Leslie directed, Joe did the cinematography, um, and using your our own backyard here in, yeah. uh, what would you say, the woods uh, as a set to create uh, a four-part film series. I mean, what a massive <laughs> project. Uh, and so was it supposed to be like, an in-person summer show like indoors that, that got taken outside or was it actually like a pivot moment or was it something you guys said, what can we do blank slate now given the circumstances of the pandemic? Yeah, that, it was, no, it was totally invented for the pandemic during one of our woods walks with Colleen, I think, and uh, her husband, we would do a lot of on the, on the hoof meetings because everyone needed to get out and get fresh air. So we yeah. would be uh, walking in the woods and it, uh, we, I normally, a lot of the time I do Shakespeare with the kids. Not always, but uh, quite frequently. And I, and I said, I just don't see a Zoom production of Shakespeare. It's like, blah, blah. It's just, you know, it's just not fun. It's not going to be juicy mm-hmm. for them. And, and no one wants to sit through two hours on a Zoom production ever, for hardly ever. Um, Agreed. You know. <laughs> I've done it, and I will n- never do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've seen some good ones. Um, but... It just seemed like not helpful, and um, I don't know. We thought it would be great if we could do some kind of a, a of a movie. What would happen? Do you think they'd be into making a movie? Would the kids want to do that? And then you know we had to do some research, and you know uh, these these phones today are really amazing. And Joe did some research and found out about these gimbal units that you can put your phone on, and it makes it all steady cam, mm-hmm. and you can you don't need to have a tripod and dollies and all these things it was amazing we got some running dolly shots and you know (laughs) it 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 was uh it was amazing it was amazing what we were able to do with this little where is it here it is there's the star of the show it's a it's a one plus six t the screen is shattered now, but it, boy, this thing just did shut the whole thing in 4K. Well, well we had one guest beautiful. appearance by my uh, my law yes, firm's is, iPhone. Thank you. You'd be uh, challenged to find it now. When we there. when we um, ran out of juice at the end of the day one day, <laughs> oh my we had gosh, backup batteries. Scary. It was a production. So let me tell you, this is one yeah. of the hardest things we've ever. I mean, uh, we've ever done. The kids were incredible. They were just, they worked so hard. And hey, Zoom is actually a great rehearsal pr- platform for film because, you know, you're seeing close ups and um, we're seeing their faces. Uh, they did such hard work. I, I said, you know, this is not a situation where you can come in and blow your lines. You just have to be, you have to be rock solid. Uh, you will be given a costume on the day of. Hmm. You will. Wear your costume. You will not argue about your costume. <laughs> you will go to the place. We will we will block it, and then we will film it. The end. Maybe we'll do multiple takes of certain things. And they they came through like just like seasoned professionals. They those those young people are amazing. Yeah, and Adam, our son Adam, did the fight choreography, and there are a number of fights that were done, learned quickly, and done essentially in one or two yeah. takes. And they looked terrific. Of course, I tweaked them in editing, sped things up here, added some sound effects, but at the same time, it was amazing. And we had uh, uh, this cadre of parents who were our support staff at what we called base camp, which was under the beech tree down at the corner near Shirakapak Rock. And all the food was there, and all the clothes were there, and the parents were there, and the shopping carts were there, and then we'd go off up into the woods. Bottles of hand sanitizer. Exactly, and masks, hand sanitizer. Oh, that's the, the other thing. thing. We never unmasked except when we were actually doing a take. Actually, shooting. so even rehearsals were done masked, and then it was like, okay, masks off, and we had uh, some of the alums from uh, the former Pied Piper. Uh, 
students were there uh, to help as extra fighters and um, as the COVID police. <laughs> COVID police, that's right. Masks on. Your mask is you, on. You need COVID compliance yeah. officers. Yeah. You do. Well, every film set has them. That's Why not right. yours? Absolutely. Yeah. We so. did have one shot up at the Indian Caves where... I uh, didn't notice until after we got a good take that one of Robin's merry men had their mask on for the whole shot and well, shouldn't have. So c'est la vie. Yeah, well, one yeah. of the reasons we picked it's Robin. Easter egg. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We Find picked the show because we thought, well, what, what, what's an excuse to be wearing a mask for like most of the time? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we wrote we that into the script Bandits, as that's well. it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I, I remember seeing you guys lugging things up on <laughs> you know, up the sidewalk in 218 and around and, you know just one of those great stories of resilience and, mm. and you know you have this wonderful um testament to it that mm. it's mm. it's its own little documentary for for pied piper to have for years to come and it's i think true. it's really gonna it's stand as a testament to your all's work which is you know usually in the ephemeral with theater mm. yeah. so at least you it's have true. at least you have that really nice. there as um you know something different but of the, of the time and yet i i hope i, I Having seen it, I saw all four parts. Thank you very much. And, uh, it, it, I, and I love the story myself. And so it's a timeless story. And I think it will only serve for future Pied Piper groups to take on and perhaps expand on their own uh, the next right. generation. Well, just, just to make note, our gala fundraiser, which is coming up oh, in a yes. couple of months, is going to be in Washington Heights. What is that church? Uh, at the Collegiate Church, uh, the same place where I coincidentally am directing the, the barn up, play for wow. Up Theater. Everything's, so so everything's happening. Well, wow. The yeah. feature here, folks. presentation of the gala <laughs> is going to be a full-scale uh, projection screening in the sanctuary of Robin Hood. Yeah. Of all four parts? Well, it's been combined into one movie. As in, as a, it's been combined into a single movie now. Cool. Yeah, so... Nice. It's an hour-long movie. Which well, you're here, here, folks. So yeah, you got the gala <laughs> and Leslie directing um, the barn play. The barn play. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that and how that came about? Yeah, sure. Um, it's actually a barn play um, by Elizabeth Donahue. It's a beautiful piece, and just oh gosh, very, very recently, within the last two weeks. Up Theater, who I have um, directed some readings for and always wanted to work with, but our schedule is never quite. Um, worked out before, contacted me because uh, they were about to present a barn play two years ago. It was actually, I think, going into tech rehearsals, which is what happens Here, right before you open. Actually. Yes, it was. It, yes. It was over in the, um, the annex. Basically. Yeah. yeah. The and it was built. I mean, the set was built. They were right. Costumes yeah. were made, yeah. and, and it was they were rehearsed, and um, the city shut down, and, and that was the end of it, which was just such a shame. Yeah. Um, so, of course, everyone was heartbroken. And two years later, uh, they've decided to go ahead and do a production, almost completely recast because a lot of people aren't available or have moved away. Yeah. Um, mm. That's the reality. But there are a couple of uh, folks coming back, and... Um, they unfortunately couldn't, I guess, work it out with Good Shepherd this time. I think it's because the school situation has changed. Well, I they don't have know. a full time resident yeah. there now. Uh, that, yeah. that was the story two years ago. No one was in that annex, and now there is a full time right. um, rental there. Mm. So, okay. yeah, it's not available. So, that's how it goes. So, um, we had to go downtown <laughs> to yeah. 181st Street, oh. downtown, um, and um, kidding, now at, at uh, the wonderful uh, collegiate church there. And um, we're doing it in the sanctuary. And, um, yeah, the director wasn't available this time around. Uh, I guess I'm not exactly sure how, how it happened because I had very short notice. <laughs> so I've been scrambling. Yeah. We, with the production team is, is fantastic. The design team is beautiful. Um, and um, we just finished casting, and we are going to rehearsal on the 5th of April and opening on the 4th of May. So... That is uh, going to be br it's going to be brisk. Aren't you also directing You're in Town right now? I'm not. No, I'm no, not. No, you're not. No, thank goodness. That's not you're doing it. I'm not right? involved. Okay. I will be enjoying that from the Good. audience. I was just wondering. But Joe is I, Joe is involved. Because I'm that's in the, the Pied Piper show. Yeah. So yeah. I was yeah. like just curious. Yeah. I'm in the pit chorus. Okay. So unfortunately, because there are only three. A lot less responsibility than the director. Three, yeah. Oh, absolutely. There are yeah. three males in the cast. So the director asked to create a dad's chorus of uh, some of the parents okay. to add that basso. And uh, so mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun. I never really knew the show. You know, I've kind of, it's a fun you're show. in town. <laughs> I love it. It's amazing. It's a great show. Well, you're kind of leading show. me into actually a question I had for you, Joe, because um, on top of all your 
amazing service to Pied Piper and cinematography and real estate and everything else you do for the community. <laughs> too kind. Um, you're you're too you kind. have an incredible career as an actor and voiceover artist. And I was just wondering, you know, you've played um, again. We didn't have time to read. That was a, that was a short bio, folks. By the way, I didn't read his long bio earlier. I mean, he's played in the Lion of Winter. He's in the Crucible. He's played the title role in Macbeth. Uh, he's done a lot I of love stuff. Um, uh, so, any time, I mean, pandemic has been a time of reflection for a lot of people. And I was just curious, like, is there has have you had those moments going outside of your service from Piper and everything? It's like, hey, there are certain productions and roles I want to tackle. I have my eyes set on moving forward. It's yeah, bucket list stuff. That's a great question. Um, I recently found a, a voiceover marketing coach that I've started to work with. I'd like to get out in that direction and just see what else there is as an old guy to get <laughs> out there into the world. I did find out, this is a very interesting fact. I found this out about uh, a month, month and a half ago, that um, I'm actually connected with the highest grossing motion picture on planet Earth of 2020, <laughs> fairly directly, indirectly. Um, it's a movie called The 800. It's a Chinese movie about, uh, boy, oh boy, it is a CG masterpiece, but it's about the taking of Shanghai by the Japanese in World War II, and it's about this group of roughly 800 Chinese soldiers defending the city of Shanghai. And um, I did uh, voice work, ADR work, as this grizzled uh, sergeant on the inside of the Chinese uh, encampment um, I did the, the English translation version of wow. that and it turned out to be the highest grossing and I had no idea, but can we anyway, get a hold of it. A copy it's on it Amazon it? prime for two ninety nine. You can rent it and you can hear me and I get to say some pretty nasty stuff, oh, so funny. but it doesn't look like me. So you probably won't recognize it. You know, his it. voiceover booth is in the apartment in our biggest closet, <laughs> <laughs> which is very typical for New York voiceover it artists. Is, it is. Um, but I could hear him <laughs> Like screaming away in there, I would saying the most horrible blood curling yeah, well, thing. When you're storming the ramparts, <laughs> like, you can't hold back. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, man, the neighbors are going to wonder what's wrong with Joe. <laughs> He's having a bad day. I think day. they've well, the that having for a problems. Long time. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So, Only yeah, when yeah, ADR work. <laughs> and I also, um, I'm, there's a movie called Valhalla, which is, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's a Norwegian, and I play um, Thor's. Uh, naughty brother tear mm -hmm. i do the voice i don't do the you know but mm -hmm. again these things just kind of come through yeah. i've been working with the same producer for many years and he throws me into these things so i've been very very fortunate to get the opportunity to do that i'd like to go further with that as well but thanks yeah so hey highest grossing i think i got i think i made uh Two hundred dollars on that one, <laughs> and That's so about it the goes. way it works. <laughs> we can't wait for residuals from yeah, right, uh, from exactly. the days. But oh, uh, yeah. well, That's well right. congratulations on thank that. you, amazing. Thank you. Every time you rent a copy of that from Amazon Prime, I would love to know about it. I say get nothing, but um. well, I'm going to bring up something that you both can chime in on, and Joe, from your realtor background, maybe have some insight too, because you both so involved. I knew Pied Piper had to look for a new home after uh, um, Holy Trinity, their previous um, in residence there. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they had construction and they had to vacate. Uh, and I think currently in residence at the Y, if I'm not mistaken, or, well, or was pre pandemic. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> but getting to like not just for Pied Piper, but you know, up theater company, you brought it up too, like was had the home for the, a barn play over here at the annex of Good Shepherd and had to find another home down at the sanctuary at 181st Street at Fort Washington Collegiate. Um, you know, I get this question a lot and I, I want to hear your points of view because you've been here as long as I have, not longer. Um, you know, you know, a cultural arts center is missing in this neighborhood. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, what do you think will take to support one? Um, because you do have a groundswell of, and I always say we're in an artistic desert with an embarrassment of artists. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. and, oh, and well so put. I feel that we have like, there's, there, there is demand, um, but yet there is no one from 
any side, uh, north and west of Dyke, north and east of, of wherever, here from you know 225 down to 168, willing to put out the shekels or or the property to put make it happen. It's so really I just tough. want your take on it. I would, you know, and the, the pandemic has been particularly brutal to all theater companies. I know um, the Workshop Theater Company also had their own space. They had two theaters in Midtown. And no, on 360, right? Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. and mm-hmm. um, for many years. And they first had gave up one space and then finally decided to give up the other as well because just maintaining the space was causing our budget. First of all, our budget was too high for us to continue to produce under the showcase code according to equity because we had to raise so much money just to pay the rent. So they gave that up. So it, it, as it turned out, that company gave up that space exactly the same week as Pied Piper gave up their space. It was so... It was bizarre. I was so I was in charge unhappy. of the dis, dis, disposition of their goods for both theaters. Yeah, wow, which it was really kind of uh, uh, shocking. Yeah. But I, you know, my dream, of course, is that the old uh, mansion there that's, um, at, you know, at the corner of... Uh, yeah, the Hearst House. The Hearst the House, Hearst yeah. Mansion at the corner that, that would be turned into a cultural center. I mean, Paris wouldn't that be... East. It would only uh, take, like, traffic circle, one you know? Bill Gates to just go, yeah. here you go. Just a few and million. Just yeah. do it. Well, ask ask um, what's his face his wife from Amazon. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's giving a lot of money. She's giving a lot of money yeah. away. So yeah. yeah. But <laughs> but wouldn't it be wonderful? Because um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we are in, we are now, of course, arts organizations are are heavily relying on uh, spiritual organizations who are willing to share their space mm-hmm. to some degree. Churches uh, and synagogues are just like a huge resource because they're some of the only places that have space available mm. um, that's habitable. Uh, so yeah, Pied Piper ha- was in residence at uh, Holy Trinity for 20 years, and then um, when that decisions were made that involved selling development rights at Holy Trinity, there just wasn't room for the company there anymore, and so it became a homeless company. Sort of went and went to town to um, the Nagel Y, which was graciously rented to the company for a couple of seasons, but you know they couldn't let us back in because of COVID. And they have a senior uh, residence there, so they have to be particularly careful about mm. that. A lot of schools are very hesitant to talk to you about rental at this point. So it's been so um, right now that the uh, Hebrew Tabernacle has been very wonderful uh, and mm-hmm. renting space, oh, yes. not only to um, <clears throat> Pied Piper. There are other organizations that have been working there mm-hmm. as well. So it's a process, but we, boy, I think the, the dedication of the parents at Pied Piper. Oh. that kept it from dissolving altogether. There mm-hmm. were a number of us, because we had just had, we'd lost our artistic director who had retired, and then we had a, an artistic director that didn't work out, and then we had an interim artistic director. But when we formed a corporation, I'm on the board of directors for Pied Piper, the first board. Now we're in our second wave, so we have a bunch of new people now with lots of great ideas. But th- there's a great commitment to keep that that going and when we think about the fact that some of our early alumni are in their mid-30s now you know it's pretty exciting to bump into these people yeah. and hopefully they'll come back as board members you can keep cultivating exactly. well i hope keep so. the cycle right. moving right exactly. well um genevieve we have one we have one on the board now awesome we do we and do. genevieve winbeal who um is one of the was one of the kids that went through the program she just um wrote the children's show for um for the she got for, the for the fall for and the fall. Um, is um, looking to do, to do more writing and direction for the company as well. So that's yes. nice. <coughs> really nice. Yeah. What a, what a great story. It is well, great. I like to end it there if you don't mind. Sure. And it's uh, because it's a really good place of like you know bringing it home from the journey of starting it to where it is now. Um, Joe and Leslie, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking to you both. Uh, Aaron, before we delightful. say goodbye, though, but where where can we send people? to learn more about your own careers as well as Pied Piper. Mm. Well, you can send them to www.joeburby.com. That's pretty easy, J-O-E-B-U-R-B-Y.com. And they can contact me through there and learn a few things about me, but I do need to update my website. Speaking of which... I don't have a website, you know? I can't believe it. <laughs> you can call Joe and get Leslie to direct your show. We're <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You, you know need where to Leslie, find me. Come to me. We'll, you can we'll find me you through there. the Workshop Theater. Uh, I'm listed on their website, and I, I also through Pied Piper. Um, anyone can find me. <laughs> I just want to take a half a second here to thank you, Erin, yeah. for your support of the arts and your amazing work with the arts community up here because you've created a context for us to happen in 
which is very much appreciated by the people up here. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate Bravo. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Um, so, uh, and where's Pied Piper's website, just in case people want to go there? Piedpiper.nyc. Okay. It's a simple one. There you go. All right, folks. You know what to do now. Very good. <laughs> um, so, well, and listeners, you can find some of those links in the description. We'll hyperlink them in the description of this uh, episode's uh, description when we publish it here. So, again, thanks to Leslie and Joe Burby for joining me on this Artist Spotlight episode of In What Artworks On Air. And it's where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes who make their home here in Upper Manhattan. If you have a moment, please show us some love right now by rating and reviewing this podcast on Apple Podcasts. That really does help us. Uh, many thanks to Church of Good Shepherd here in Inwood, NYC for hosting us and to Hidesides.com for our local uptown promotional support. You can support On Air and all of our free programming by making a tax free donation at InwoodArtworks.nyc backslash donate. Be sure to follow us on social media at Inwood Artworks to keep up with all that we do, including the Inwood Film Festival, Filmworks Al Fresco, art galleries, live performances, and so much more. Inwood Artworks is proud to be supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. From the top of Manhattan and the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Aaron Sims for Inwood Artworks On Air. Thank you.